So we get it, we get asked this question all the time. Exactly, am I gonna learn from the business coach? So through this short video, we're gonna to explain to you everything that you're gonna learn from a business coach. My name's James Burke, and this, I'm James Vincent, and uh, we work together. James and James, make it easy for you. Let's learn how to grow a real business. So what percentage of businesses fail? How many of them see this word and crumble, failure? So Michael Gerber, in his best-selling book, it's a great business book, well worth a read if you've not already read it, The E-Myth, says that 80% of businesses fail in the first five years. 80%. So from startup to year five, 80% are gone. Now, what about that 20% that remaining? What percentage of those guys make it from year five to year 10? The answer is 20%. Again, 80% of the 20% fail, meaning that 96% of businesses fail in total, and only 4% survive. And the question is, why? Well, here's why. A great hairdresser doesn't always run a great business. So think about it. The average hairdresser spends how long learning to cut hair? Two or three years in the UK? So let's say she learns to cut hair, she gets a job, she builds a bit of a client bank, and then she takes this big, bold, brave step of going alone. She sets up her own business. She's changed profession, hasn't she? She's no longer a hairdresser. Now she's a business owner. She spent two or three years learning how to cut hair. How many years does she spend learning her new profession of business ownership? And the answer is zero. She just jumped straight back in, cutting hair again. And that is why 96% fail because of a lack of business education. So we're here today to show you exactly what you'll learn from a business coach and how it can benefit your business. So this is what we're gonna take you through. Our six step system, six steps to consistent massive results. And we're gonna start out with mastery. So we've gotta get the basics right and eliminate the chaos. And mastery is divided into four segments, destination, time, finance and delivery. So let's start with destination mastery. So don't make the mistake of thinking that business owners don't work hard because they work really hard. In fact, there was a garage, a garage about a mile away from my old house. And this garage had a sign right outside and they wore it really proud saying, we've been here for 30 years. And the sign was really old. It would probably been there for about 10 years. Now think about this. How can some companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon grow at this astronomical rate within a decade? And yet this mechanic at this garage couldn't outgrow this small garage in 40 years. Is it because he didn't work hard? Of course not. Getting under that hood every day, working on the car, being a mechanic is a hard job. So what is it? It's a lack of clarity on direction. And that's what destination mastery is all about. How clear are you on where you're going? How clear are you on your North Star, your biggest dream, your goal? That's why the mechanic never outgrew the garage. He didn't have a goal, he didn't have a dream. So that's the first job in destination mastery is learning and uncovering what your dream is, what your biggest goal is, and then putting a plan in place to get you. That is what gives you clarity. And that's what Destination Mastery is all about. So once you're really clear on where you're going and what your goal is and what your dream is, we move on to Time Mastery. So again, how many business owners do you know that are super busy? How often do you feel like you're super busy? Well, most of the business owners that we work with and first speak to feel incredibly busy. So time mastery we split up into four segments. And these segments encompass two main words. One of them is urgent. So think of urgent the things that need doing now. In terms of the timeline, they're pressing. And then we've got important. So these are the things that don't necessarily need doing now, but they will grow the business, they move the business forward. So we start out with not urgent and not important. And we call that distraction. That's the D word for this summary. Distraction or not urgent, not important. 
So how much of your day do you spend in distraction? What does distraction look like? It might be social media. It might be emails that aren't actually progressing the business. It might be the team grabbing you and just wrestling with you for a chit-chat. All of those things are distraction, aren't they? Most business owners are in this box too often. Now, you want to be in it a little bit. It's nice to have 1%, 2 3% of your time in distraction just to get you in a peak state and get you clear-headed. But you don't want to spend any more time in it than that. The next box is things that are urgent and not important. Now, how can something be urgent and not important? The D word for that is delusion. It feels urgent, but it's not important. What might fit into this category? But if you've got a high-performing team member and they're running late by five or 10 minutes and they're never late, they're always on time, they take great pride in their work. For them, sighting that traffic jam, knowing they're going to be five minutes late, feels like the most urgent, pressing thing in the whole world, doesn't it? But actually, it's not even important. You're going to forget about it. You know they usually do a great job. You're not worried. And actually, it's not going to affect their day being five minutes late. Of course, if this is a team member that's regularly late, different story. But for this high performer, it's really not urgent. But because to them, it feels, it feels super urgent. It's not even important. We call that delusion. So again, most business owners spend a good chunk of their time here rushing around urgently trying to fix things that aren't important. So our third category on this is things that are urgent and important. The D word for this is demand. These are the things that are demanding your time. So that might be sales calls. They're urgent and they're important. That might be active customers that need or want something. That's urgent and they're important to the growth of the business, right? So this is the first box that you want to spend a good amount of time in. Maybe as you become a true business owner and not just a technician or a hairdresser cutting hair, you spend less and less time in this box and you have other people dealing with the demand. But ultimately, you're going to want to spend some time here. But again, most business owners spend almost all of their time here. Now, where we want to be is in the bullseye. And the bullseye is our fourth category. And the fourth category is things that are not urgent, but very, very important. We classify this as working on the business. The demand, the urgent and important, the sales calls, the customers, that's working in the business, isn't it? It's the hairdresser cutting more hair. But not urgent, but very important, that's working on the business. That's your business strategy, your planning, your learning, your education, growing the business. And the D word for this is direction. This is where we want to be. You remember we said on Destination Mastery, you've got your North Star, your biggest goal and dream. This category, the not urgent but very important, is working on that dream. It's not just working on the business, it's working on your dream. And that's where we want to get you to. The more time you spend in that box, hitting the bullseye, the quicker your business is going to grow. And the more likely you are to outgrow that 40-year-old garage and go and chase your North Star. So next up, we've got financial mastery. Now, this might just be the most important part of business. Because if you don't know your numbers, if you're not keeping score, what kind of game are you playing? Now, think about it like this. Would you watch a sporting event where no one's keeping score? Wouldn't be a very entertaining game, would it? But the importance of knowing your numbers is highlighted when it comes to financial mastery. And there are three key areas. There's one area that shows the past. That's your P&L or profit and loss account. So that shows the income to the business or your sales revenue. It shows your fixed costs. These are the things that you've got to pay no matter what. So things like your rent, your salaries, insurances, accountancy fees. And then wedged in between those two, the revenue and the fixed costs, you've got your cost of sales. These are the things that you only need to spend if you make a sale. So it might be sales commission for the salespeople. Their salary is a fixed cost, but their commission, you only pay it if they make a sale. It might be materials for any products that you sell. So these are the things that you only pay if you make a sale. And then ultimately, right at the bottom, the math kind of looks after itself. It's your sales minus cost of sales minus fixed costs equals your profit. So your P&L shows you the past. Why is that helpful? So that you can spot trends. The number isn't even as important as the trend. If your sales are going down and down and down every month, 
you may still be over target, but please notice the trend. They're dropping, so you need to action it now. Your marketing spend might be going up and up and up every month. You may still be below budget, but it's going up and up whilst your sales are going down. Spot the trend. Then you can make great informed decisions. Then we've got your balance sheet. Your balance sheet shows you the here and now. It shows you the present. And the most important part of your balance sheet is what's called your working capital. That shows you where the profit in the business needs turning into cash. Profit doesn't equal cash. This can be in outstanding invoices, otherwise known as accounts receivable. It can be in money that you owe out, otherwise known as accounts payable. Or it can be in your inventory. If you've got a bunch of stock that you're holding, that's cash waiting to get out of the business, isn't it? It might even be in work in progress, otherwise known as WIP, which again is jobs that are waiting to be finished so that you can be paid on them. They're all things that are stopping the cash from coming out of the business. So that's what you look at when you're looking at your balance sheet and you want to make sure you're managing and tracking the difference between your profit and your cash. Then finally, we've got the cash flow forecast. Your cash flow forecast is a PL with the sales, cost of sales, and fixed cost. But instead of showing you the past, it shows you the future. This is you guessing and forecasting what the sales, the cost of sales, and the fixed costs are going to be. And with that, you can then guess what your profit and cash position is going to be as well. Now, the name of the game for all three of these key things for you to look at is like we said a little bit earlier, it's spotting the trends and it's also to keep control. Keep control of your finances. Critical. How can you do that? With KPIs, key performance indicators, numbers and targets that show you whether you're on track or not. A really easy way to look at your numbers. So make sure you're on top of your finance mastery. Might just be the most important part of everything we're going to show you. Next up, you've got delivery mastery. And this is all about creating raving fans consistently. The name of the game here is to get your business to a place where your fans love you that much that they're doing your marketing for you. They're shouting your name from the rooftop. They're telling everybody that they've got to be a part of your organization. They've got to work with you. Think about businesses that are great at this. You think of Disney. Most people get excited just from hearing the name Disney. Why? Because one thing they do incredibly well is make their customers happy. And actually, that's one of the key roles and responsibilities for each of their team. They're told that in their training. Rule number one, make customers happy. It overrides every other rule. So how are you in relation to Disney? Are your customers wild and they blown away or are you getting complaints? So there's two parts to this. There's number one, the mindset. Have you and your team got the mindset to really delight your customers? We know in some industries that we've worked with, when we first started working with them, actually they saw the customers as the enemy. Solicitors and estate agents are a great example of this. The estate agents are the customers for the solicitors, yet they hate each other. So first part is mindset. Second part is systems. Once you've got the mindset that you want to blow away your customers, you've got to have the system to make sure that everybody in the business does it every time with every customer. When you get there, you're going to have a level of consistency and effectiveness that's just going to mean you develop raving fans and, like we said, they start doing the marketing for you. Those four areas, destination, time, finance, and delivery, they're up up mastery. That's called getting the basics right and eliminating the chaos. So as you're starting to make some progress on mastery, you're going to feel that stability in the business. You're going to get a little bit of time back as well. They are your four giant leaps towards a better business. Then we move on to niche. So niche is all about predictable cash flow. Let's really start making some money. This is the sexy bit. So here we're going to look at a strong USP, giving you a strong, unique selling point so that you really stand out. Maybe even creating a guarantee. Hey, for a lot of businesses, if you've got a guarantee, that is a USP because so few businesses have one. And then we're going to look at the five ways. What the hell are the five ways? Probably the sexiest thing in the system. If finances is most important, the five ways are probably the sexiest. So niche is basically marketing and sales. Now, what is marketing? Marketing is creating relationships. Think about it like this. If we're in the bar, you're stood at the bar, you've never seen me before in your life, and I tap you on the shoulder, you turn around and I say, will you marry me? You're going to be like, 
No, you weirdo, of course not. And I leave the bar pretty sour faced. Why? We don't know each other. So instead, how would you start a relationship like that? Well, you'd start a relationship like that by being curious. Being curious about the other person. Learning and understanding what makes them tick, what doesn't. What turns them on, what turns them off. And getting to know each other. Once you've been on a few dates, and once you've started building a relationship, then maybe you can ask them out. A few more years of that, and then finally you can propose. And you're much more likely to get a yes, right? Marketing is the same way. A lot of businesses jump straight in and say, will you marry me? Do you want to buy our stuff? You walk through their social media on the website. You see them at a networking event or whatever marketing is that you may be doing. And the first thing is, do you want to buy from us? No. Create a relationship first. Then when we get, we do get to the sales, where does sales take over marketing? Well, actually, the lines are becoming really blurred as we move forward in time. But we classify sales as when someone raises their hand and says, yes, I'd like to find out more, that's where the sales team kick in. And now it's not about creating a relationship because you've already got one. It's now about building on that relationship. You know, what's the first word you think of when I say the word salesman? And we do this at seminars and events. The words that we get back are always the same. Arrogant, pushy, sleazy. Yeah, that's a bad salesman. What makes a great salesperson? They ask questions and get curious. They really listen. And third and probably most importantly, they really care. They find the right solution for that person. And if that right solution means us not working together, we're not the best fit for you, that's great as well. It just shows that you really care. So that's marketing and sales. You're going to get a ton of education, a ton of training. Like I said, you're going to learn the five ways. The five ways to really grow a business. Because every business wants more customers, turnover and profit. The problem is, this isn't the three ways, right? They're results. How do you get more customers? More leads and convert them better. There's two of the five ways. And how do you turn those customers into revenue? Well, you take those customers and you work on your average sale, how much they spend, and then you work on their number of transactions, how often they spend. And what about the difference between revenue and profit? Well, that's your margins, isn't it? They're the five ways, the five things that you can really work on to grow your business. Once you've got the five ways right, you've got predictable cash flow. You've got money coming in. And when you work on those three things, your USP, your guarantee, and the five ways, you've got another three huge leaps forward towards a profitable, predictable business. Thank you, James. That's uh, seven big steps forward to getting your business working without you. Let's look what is next then. Let's move up. The next is leverage. What's leverage about? Leverage is about two things. It's about systemizing your business. We do that with nine simple steps and we get the four areas of operations in your business working seamlessly together. So if, um, if I've got a ladder behind me and I put the ladder up against the wall and I climb the ladder and, me, and I get to the top of the ladder, that's called being productive. And productivity always comes first. So getting to the top of that ladder. What happens when you get to the top of the ladder and you realize you put the ladder against the wrong wall? Whew. It's productive but ineffective. So you got to get the ladder against the right wall for it to be effectiveness. Now, what James talked to you about earlier on was time mastery. Time mastery was all about productivity. Climbing the ladder. Doing the do. Getting the most out of your time. Actually, he also then talked to you about delivery mastery, which was about consistency. And in actual fact, that was about being effective, getting processes in place and becoming really effective. What, what leverage is about, it's about systemization. And systemization is about adding efficiency into what you do. Now, it's worthwhile writing this down as you're watching these videos. Systems run your business, your team run the systems, and you lead the team. Now, that three-sentence mantra is a mantra that, sadly, very few business owners actually believe. 
It's the one that you want to take and embrace from this day on because very, very few business owners get to that point. You get the stability from the four key areas that James talked to you earlier about, mastery level. You start getting the money-making machine in place at that whole sales and marketing level in niche, and then you switch the systems on. You get everything driving efficiency. And what happens, that ladder behind you, now imagine a really big ladder, a really big ladder. And every little rung on the ladder is a system. And imagine everybody doing that efficiently. And what when you add efficiency into the, the whole concept of your business, you can get to the top of that ladder at extreme speed. And very, very few businesses get to this point. So there's nine steps that we take you through in order to create systems in your business, in order to systemize it. And remember, this is the bit that very few people get to. Systems run your business. Your team run the systems and you lead the team. Next, we, we get an operations manual in place. We get everything visible, held in one place, so people know what they've got to do. Now, there is a rule to performance, and the rule is this. People perform much, much higher when they know exactly what's expected of them. And that's what happens when you've got your systems all checklisted, all in the same place, all of your areas of operations that are working together seamlessly. And it comes together to create that magical word of efficiency. And what happens at this point? What do you really get? Well, we're already seven giant leaps forward to personal freedom, financial freedom, to a business that's working without you. What you've got at this point is you've got a further nine steps through the systemized process that will help you get in place in your business and a further four steps of the areas of operation. 20 steps further forward to gain your business to work without you. And guess what else you get? You get time. This is the biggest differentiator in your life. This is where your time comes back. Why does your time come back at that level? Because you've got into leadership and management in a big way. Because you've got other people doing things. All the problems are not coming back to me now. There's other people that's following systems, there's following processes, and all the problems are not coming to you. That's why you get your time back. So where do we go from here? Whew, let's keep going. We're going to the team area. All right. And now I'm going to talk to you through six keys to winning team. And well, and let's, let's mention the first one. You know, if winning is about fielding the best team, how is it important you get the right players on your team and the best players on your team? It's really important. So recruitment is a never ending process. It's starting. When's a good time to get into recruitment in a big way yesterday? And if you didn't get into it yesterday, you get into it today. So the first thing I want to mention is recruitment because it exists in everything that we do at team level. The next areas I want to talk about are these six that are on screen there. Let's now where do we move next to? We move next to synergy. What is synergy? Well, one add one is not two. One add one is three or one add one is 11. What do we teach from this? Each five areas, strategy, business development, people, execution, and mission. They're the five areas that we go through. This is about getting your business working together synergistically so that you're getting a multiplication effect on your business. No longer are we looking at growing by percentage. We're looking at growing by multiples. We're looking at also adding multiples to a potential sale of your business if that's something that you want to do here. So what do we cover at strategy level? Well, we look at your business model. We assess the marketplace. Where's the opportunities? How are we going to scale this up? Where, where are the areas that we can leverage further? What's your marketability like? And that's all in place to just scale your business up. Business development, you know, you know that business development is definitely about marketing. You know that business development is definitely about sales. In actual fact, it's also about customer experience. You know, customer service is one word, customer experience is another. But synergy level is about getting those three departments or those three teams working together synergistically so that your, your customers can get more and everything can speed up. Get a, then we look at people, getting a leadership team in place. 
making sure that you've got smart numbers in your business, making sure that you've got a healthy culture because what? That's going to give us deeper roots. It's going to give us a stronger stability to scale even further. Execution is about processes. It's about management systems. It's about financial controls so that we can enhance the consistency even more. And last but not least is mission. This is where your business is now getting, it's getting bigger. It's bigger than you now. There's a leadership team in place. And now you've got social responsibility. No longer can you put out those cheeky little ad hoc things on Twitter or because you've got a responsibility. It's bigger than you. And that's the mission. We want to achieve, you and your business want to achieve something in the marketplace that's of great magnitude, that makes a difference, that makes a lasting change. And that's what's going to help even more customers come your way. So what happens now? Well, we're five further huge steps forward to getting personal freedom and financial freedom. You can also start taking a real passive income at this stage. All right, let's move on to the last area then. Results. This is where it's all about, yeah? Results. This is about teaching you and training you and helping you become a real investor. Now, what we're going to help, what we're going to do at that stage is we're going to cover three areas with you. Back to James and James now. And there's the three areas. Look at selling your business, looking at further investments that you can take, and your own personal growth as well. So selling your business, essentially, it's about coaching, coaching you through that finish date. It's about increasing the multiplier of what your business is worth. It's about getting your business run under management, even potentially hiring a CEO at some stage. And that's going to help you get personal financial freedom. Uh, coaching you to become an investor, shares, property, other businesses, diversify your current business and go elsewhere. Again, massive steps forward to personal and financial freedom. And last but not least, it's, it's you, you. You as a business owner. We might need to coach you to let go of a few things. We might need to help you create the space that, that you want to invest further elsewhere. And all of this is so that you can keep doing the things that you love in your life. Anything to add, big man? When we get to results, it's not just about what you'll get. Because, of course, Richard Branson famously said, if you can grow and build one business, you can do it with any amount of businesses. But it's really about who you become. Who you're going to become as you work through all of these levels of the six steps to a better business. Who you become as you become a really successful business owner. Yeah, you'll have loads of great stuff and you'll do loads of great things as well. But you'll become a great person. And that's the ultimate point of the results section in the six steps. Beautiful. And there you have it. What you're left with at the end of there is the potential to go and make the world a better place. So on behalf of us both, thank you very much for listening. Hope you've enjoyed. And we're really looking forward to working with you and helping you achieve that personal and financial freedom that you deserve. Go get them, team.